There's a quote by Jordan Peterson that always stuck with me. If you're harmless, you're not virtuous. You're just harmless. You're like a rabbit. A rabbit isn't virtuous. It just can't do anything except get eaten. That's not virtuous. If you're a monster and you don't act monstrously, then you are virtuous. Today's press day, and I have a pretty simple routine planned. I'm going to do three warm-up sets and a couple of working sets, and then I'm going to go into accessories. Uh, what I'm focusing on today is I wanted to kind of show the difference uh, between benching without an arch and benching with one. So what I have planned is I'm going to warm up to 225 pounds on the barbell, and then I'm going to do a set to failure using as little arch as possible with my feet flat on the ground with the traditional standard flat bench. I'm going to rest for six minutes and then I'm going to do another set to failure using my standard uh, platform competition form which is a pretty pronounced arch feet tucked under and I wanted to illustrate for uh, people that think that there's a huge difference uh, between the, the benching styles and that if you bench with an arch, it's not a real bench, you're cheating, it's fake. And you'll see, if you look at the videos, you'll notice that the range of motion isn't that different. Unless you have such a pronounced arch that you're like some kind of circus freak where you're contorted and your chest is pointing straight up and you have your arms set as far as they can go out on the bar so you only have two inches uh, range of motion. For most people, the difference between benching with a really pronounced arch and benching with a flat back is a couple of inches at best. So really, does that make me mean that it's not a lift? I mean, I hear this argument all the time. And that's without even going into the specifics of why you would want to do one or the other to begin with. I have noticed that I've performed all my warm-up sets with a relatively flat back and my feet out. Uh, this is a 175 and I'm getting ready to start my first AMRAP. And now I'm going to bench 225 with a flat back for as many as I can. I wind up getting 17 reps. That's pretty good. Uh, it's not the best. My best is 21. Um, right off the bat I notice that my shoulders are kind of hurting. Uh, no, nothing major but I'm noticing discomfort. Almost like impingement. Uh, my leg drive is not as good. But as far as power is concerned, it's it's about the same as it would be with an arch back. I, I definitely have a little bit more power with an arch back, but not a significant amount more. Now here I bench the same thing with uh, my standard platform arch uh, technique. I feel like my shoulders are my shoulder blades are tucked better. My Shoulder pain is completely alleviated. Everything's tighter. I have way better leg drive. What I'm doing for leg drive is I'm pressing my heels into the ground when I'm pushing the weight up. Uh, I only got 18 reps, so that right there, that's more than the last set. So I'm stronger. Uh, but I just did the previous set to failure. So how much stronger would I have been if I had done this one uh, without any fatigue, I probably could have gotten 2021. So there's a little bit of a increase in my ability to push weight. So now that I've done some high rep benching, I want to go into a little bit of stretching uh, because I have been kind of dealing with uh, bicep uh, tendonitis. Uh, these stretches, uh, what I'm doing is I'm looping the bands around my wrists and I'm trying to uh, pull the two tendon connection joints for your biceps. One's underneath your uh, shoulder here and one's over here underneath everything. Now 
that most people have two, but fun fact, there's a percentage of the population that can have up to four connection points for that bicep. Uh, it's just, we're all genetically a little bit different, and some people, if you look at their x-rays, it, their tendons are spread out, almost like a, uh, think of like cats, uh, polydactyl cats, some of them have uh, an extra thumb like mittens, an extra claw, uh, some of them have extra spines. Well, humans, the, their muscle connection points and their tendons uh, can all be a little bit different. All of our muscle insertions, some guys have really big lats. Uh, people can have uh, extra tendon connection points. You, you wouldn't really know if you did or didn't, and it's really irrelevant. I mean, as far as like physical therapy is concerned, you still want to want to do the same thing. So what I'm attempting to do here is uh, I'm trying to stretch that tendon to the, where it connects in here. I'm just trying to pull that apart. Uh, and so I'll focus the next uh, few minutes on doing like 30 second stretches uh, in various positions. I'll turn my arm and just really try to feel where it's tense. At least it just feels great, especially after benching. And that, that'll, uh, that'll help with longevity. Yeah. And now I'm back to accessory work. Uh, I do four sets of tricep pushdowns using the cable machine. And uh, really, I, I just like to pick an exercise that hits the triceps uh, after I do bench. And I'll usually do uh, two exercises, uh, usually four or five sets of anywhere between five and ten reps. And I like to rotate them. Uh, so one of the things I like to do is I like to throw in an accessory that goes against what I'm currently doing. So for example, if I'm doing bench press, I'll do two accessories that, that complement the bench press, but I'll do one that goes against it. So in this case, curls. Why curls? Uh, well, in this case specifically, pre-shirt curls, because of what I'm trying to do is stretch that bicep out to alleviate some of the tendonitis I have. And by doing that, I can really get everything stretched out. And I'm not working with a ton of weight. I think I have 40 pounds on the bar. But just like nice, slow, get a little pump, and just really let that bar stretch the arms out. Um, For my second and final accessory, I decided to do heavy dumbbells. Uh, I worked up to 100 pounds for a set of 10. I accidentally deleted that clip, but I posted it earlier uh, in one of my shorts. So I, I did do it. But uh, what I wanted to highlight in particular was the way that I get the weights into position. Now for this set, I'm going uh, fairly wide and I'm trying to get a good stretch of the pectoral muscles. So I'm bringing the bars down as, just past my chest and I'm really going for full range of motion on these. Now sometimes the weights will become too heavy to set them down, but I really encourage people to get into the habit of not dropping the weights unless they have to. They become so heavy you just can't set them down because uh, it'll damage them. I don't know if you've ever seen like the 100 pounds at some commercial gyms that are a little bit bent. It's because people drop them. Uh, I sit up with the weights by setting them on my thighs and I just sort of use the weight to rock myself up. So watch how I take these weights. I pick them up, I set one on the thighs and I scooch them up as close to my waist as I can get them. And then I lock everything in and I'm holding the weights like this. I'll rock back with them with my elbows tucked in and locked. And then once I get fully back, I arch and thrust them up and lock them out and get stable. I lock my arms out. I've got the weights above my head. And then I get stable on the bench. And then I start pressing. Same thing. When I'm done, I bring the weights down and I try to shimmy them down back to my waist. And then I use that weight to counterbalance and swing myself up. Now, you, when I got to the set of hundreds, they became too heavy and I kind of had to drop them. But I dropped them from here. I dropped them from the lower position. I just let them go. And, you know, it can still damage the floor or the weights at that, but, you know, it's way better than dropping them from up here. Uh, 
And I, I, I encourage guys to try to respect equipment that isn't theirs. And if you're working out at a commercial gym, that stuff's super expensive. Something to consider. So, some of you might be wondering why I opened up with that quote about Jordan Peterson. And one of the things that I would like to focus on, but haven't really, is the mindset of a warrior. What our responsibilities as strong and assertive men are in this crazy world. I mean, I don't care about your ideology. I'm not very political myself. Um, I care about protecting my loved ones and, you know, being a good person, like, well, being a good man. What does that entail? Uh, well, first and foremost, I think it's three things you have to cultivate, mind, body, and spirit. Uh, it's really hard to be virtuous when you don't possess, possess a characteristic. I mean, how can you, how can you protect your loved, your loved ones if you can't defend yourself? How can you defend yourself if you can't, if you're not strong? Um, as we get older, we become burdens to our loved ones if we don't take care of ourselves. And sometimes life deals us with misfortune. You know, I've been homeless. Uh, I've been around the world. I'm a veteran. I served in the Marine Corps. I've seen some pretty horrific violence. Uh, I've seen some pretty bad stuff. Um, and I've overcome quite a bit to get to where I am right now. And a lot of that has to do with uh, just the, my perseverance. And part of that is the reason why I try to hone myself. I try to temper myself, forge myself into this just piece of steel and you know I, I enjoy weightlifting I like competing and I love showing off and I like being the strong old guy in the gym but the at the, the end of the day one of my big fears is just becoming frail you know not being able to to care for myself uh, being a burden on other people or my worst fears is if that day ever uh, comes I won't be able to protect the ones I love, my kids, my wife. Uh, you know, the thing, I, would, I, I wouldn't call myself a pacifist, but I would never start a fight. Um, I think part of growing up and becoming a man is just being able to uh, resolve conflicts amicably. You know, I, I really pride myself on my conflict resolution skills, my ability to... Uh, talk people down in violent situations. I do it professionally at work. Uh, a lot of times on the job site when you're dealing with construction workers, a lot of these guys, they're infantile egomaniacs and they want to fight everybody. Uh, and sometimes conflicts can become physical. And one of the things that I've cultivated over the years is just an, an ability to calmly and assertively diffuse situations like that. But if, but may, and a lot of people, don't see they don't perceive me as threatening and nor would I want them to that's not my intentions at all but I know for a fact that if the situation ever were to arise where I needed to defend myself from somebody that wanted to harm me in some way I could I'm, I'm really confident in my abilities to handle that situation <laughs> And there's a part of me, deep and down and underneath it all, there's a, there's that kid that wants to fight. You know, I want to get into it with somebody. I want him to come after me. I want him to say something messed up. I want him to put his hands on me. But then there's the calm adult who realizes that I have to be, you know, the bigger man in most situations. And I choose to not be violent and not be aggressive and not be threatening and to treat people with respect and I, that's the, the example I want to be to my kids but it all stems from a lot of guys I've noticed weak men men that aren't physically able to to carry themselves or men that are afraid of getting hurt they're they, they are often resentful and they become very passive aggressive and weak men can easily go down the road of becoming evil men, you know, vindictive, plotful. They're, they're, your friend, they're, for your, they're friends to your face, but they secretly despise you, and they're going to do things to either assassinate your character or, or harm you in some way. 
because they can't confront you physically. And I've noticed that men that are confident, men that, that can box, men that can, uh, you know, that, that do MMA, uh, weight lifts, strong guys, they're usually not looking for a fight because they, and they're not, they're not backed down so easily. They don't allow people to cross their boundaries. Uh, they just carry themselves in a way. It's almost like knowing you can handle yourself. Uh, it, it takes that question. It's like just not an issue for you. When you're walking down the street, you're not wondering. You know you can handle yourself. You know if something happens, you'll be able to take care of it. And part of that is just being as strong as you can. So you owe it to yourself to be strong. Uh, do you need to be a power lifter? No. But, you know, you should be able to, you know, get over an obstacle, hop over a fence, climb a wall, uh, pick somebody up and carry them out of a burning building, you know, get somebody out of a vehicle that's been hit on the side of the road. Uh, you should be able to change your tires. You should be able to maintain your house. Uh, you, help, you should be able to help the old lady get her groceries across the street or... Or if your neighbor needs something picked up and moved, and your my elderly neighbors, you know, he needed to move some rocks, I can just handle it for him. It's like you want to be that guy that that's able to do stuff to to carry the load. And one of the things that I really love about Jordan Peterson is the principles of finding meaning, not happiness. Like everybody says that you should pursue happiness, and happiness is fleeting. And people should pursue meaning. And uh, I really feel like one of the cornerstones uh, or the springboard to any type of success, whether your pursuits are intellectual or artistic or oratory or whatever it is, um, having a strong physical, a strong physique and, and capability will help in every situation. I mean, even if it's just boost, boosting self-confidence. Uh, so I, I really think that everybody owes it to themselves to get into the best shape that they can. You know, a lot of people see us and they see us as just wanting to show off. And, you know, yeah, there's, there's something to that. But you take all that away. You take the internet away, the cameras, the competitions, everything. It still serves you to be physically strong and able. So that's kind of the main focus and goal of this channel I want to uh, that's what I that's the message I want to put out there you know up to this point I've just done basic training videos but I'd like to you know maybe dip into the philosophy a little bit and see where that takes us you never know thanks for watching guys hit that subscribe button